Good morning. Sorry I didn't see you guys there. Um, I was waiting for someone to chime before I start talking. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We can see the DXY starting out bullish, uptrend during Asia, and on EU we see the exact opposite. And also on the indices. So if we look at the daily time frame on both NQ and ES right now, you can see down closing candles as of right now. Let's go to the one hour time frame and see what we can pull off SMC Dungeon. I think I went through WAP and I saw you got the lifetime subscription, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. So let's see. The last one with a discount actually. All right, so I'm going to drag out this one hour fair value gap. And let's use the middle line here. Just taking it down from a daily time frame because on a daily we do not have much inside of this candle. Like we don't have a fair value gap yet here that we can use. So looking at the four hour we could of course also be looking at the four hour, but well the four hour up the four hour time frame doesn't update as frequently. So I'd like to look at the one hour time frame and then take it from there. As we can see the one hour closed below the 50%. And now it's the only fair value gap that we have on the one hour. I like that. Let's drop it down to the 15. Turn on the ICT all in one to do some of the charting work for us. No signs of a potential reversal to the upside. I'm not really interested in going short right now, at least. So let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Previous day's high. Previous week's high. Previous day and previous week's high coming in on Friday's high. Previous week's lower. Small range. 50% of our previous week's range coming in. Let me grab that low and the high. 50% of the weekly range, previous week range coming in at 4576.25. So that's only 12 points away from current price. We are inside the one hour bullish value gap right here. Let's drop it down to the five. But we can also see that here on the five minute time frame, there's not a single fair value gap inside this one hour fair value gap. So I'm just going to use it as a reference. I won't leave it on my chart right now. I don't see the value in that. The only thing that is interesting to me right now is we have this one hour bullish fair value gap and Asia didn't want to touch it. We left Asia session equal lows until we broke right here at 2 a.m. started to sell off. So let's see what's happening at the low of that two hour fair value, uh, one hour fair, fair value gap. But right now, nothing too interesting to be really honest. Asia open up. We have the, not a new day open up. We have a new week opening gap here, this white box. You can turn it on if you never use the ICT all in one indicator by turning on the new week opening gap and modifying the settings right in here started to trend down immediately 
Asia, a very narrow, narrow range, like, look at this, less than five points. Consolidation, tap the VWAP, rejected, midnight open, bearish value gap, traded back into it once before breaking all these equal lows at 2 a.m. and then we continue to sell off. But we haven't really referenced fair value gap smart shadow then right here at 250, 255 and London open holding resistance on this volume imbalance. But there's no fair value gap that I can reference to the left. So I wouldn't be surprised if price continues to go lower, to be really honest. We took out this higher low right here during Asia and pulled back. We have Asia high buy side. I would like to see a market structure shift. But knowing that it's Monday without news, <clears throat> so typically my Mondays are at least the London sessions, the first London sessions for the week. I usually tend to make more mistakes than yeah, than usual compared to the other sessions like tuesday london session so yeah i'm just trying to play it safe this monday and see how that goes instead of yeah risking too much when i predict the coming week um well it's that's the thing with predictions it's just your yeah your gut feeling and some levels that just really make sense like yes uh, like last week with eu the only thing that really made sense and and putting things back into perspective i this morning when i checked twitter there's something crazy that happened on gold that liquidated many people some people claim to have made uh, profits on it, but most of the profits have been eaten up by spread and commissions. Take a look at this. Gold market open uh, Friday, Friday, Friday. Right here, you see that? Gold moved up. 79 us dollars i'm not sure how many pips that is i'm i don't trade forex i don't trade gold but yeah <laughs> yeah there are so many gurus on twitter saying that they went long right here because they knew this pump is gonna happen that's a typical pump and dump it's nice to see gold breaking out we finally took these three relative equal highs and we pushed through all that resistance imagine how much selling interest was right here at this level if we think about support or supply and demand support and resistance we pushed above that Boom. immediately retraced 2 a.m big manipulation on gold That's crazy. Haven't seen something like that in a long time. But anyway, that's why I like to trade something more sophisticated. Mm -mm -mm. So, daily analysis, we don't need that right here. Put it in a folder and hide it. But yeah, the main part about the weekly outlook is really just looking for daily areas of interest, really. If we turn that on, main daily and fair value gaps on the daily, it's rather simple. Like, okay, we have this daily bearish fair value gap. We have daily buy side right here at this high that we haven't cleared yet. 50% and especially that daily volume imbalance and throughout the week if we keep on going higher then reference these areas I'm interested in looking for something on the lower time frame 
So those are just milestones, basically, where we could anticipate a short-term pullback. Like for example, if we are on a lower time frame and we say, okay, we just hit that 4,629 level, we've moved five points above that, and now we get a textbook 2022 model that would just be more confluence also based on a higher time frame that we're now trading inside of this daily volume imbalance getting a short term reversal away from that area to maybe the 50 percent of a daily range is something i would be looking for it doesn't have to happen but the probability that it's going to happen inside this area is pretty high Mm -mm -mm. 15 minute time frame let's look out at our previous days range measured from the low to the high we are almost at equi equilibrium we haven't reached it yet so let's see what that what happens around that area interested in going short below that 50 percent not at all i would be like i said looking for some bullish order flow to be put in place trying to get short that might have been interesting if we would have started at 2 a.m but yeah i prefer to not start at 2 a.m anymore getting trends before 2 a.m is lately at least pretty rare and it's not worth that extra hour of work. I prefer to wait after market open and then see how it goes. So the XY starting to retrace a little bit. Nothing major. The XY took out right here and Friday's low. So we would assume that EU takes out Friday's high. Didn't happen slight divergence here between EU and the DXY. Opened up, took sell side, market structure shift, fair value gap, continuation higher. Let's see if we could have translated that over to EU. Mm, we opened up 18, we took buy side, Shift the structure, new week opening gap. Uh, not really tough one. Signs of bullish order flow. Might even be using the one minute time frame for that. Because I like the structure we're putting in here. Like high, low, high, low, high, low, high. Mm, but I want to see a nice displacement with that. So a nice one minute bullish fair value gap, even if we go above this high, but without leaving behind a fair value gap, I'm not interested. So this is the structure that I'm eyeing on on the one minute time frame: low, high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Well, you could go really fractal here if you want to. High, uh, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And this is already your displacement at 312. New 15 minute cycle. Get starting to get a retracement. But last week, I've managed to stay away from the one minute time frame at least for years during the London kill zone. So I'm just going to be looking at one minute today as well that might be a thing for tuesday but usually like like i already said i'm i tend and many people have shared that same trade tend to be too excited for monday's london session trying to make some profits for the week already and well last few weeks have never really worked out tend to make more mistakes than not So let's just take it one step at a time. Mm 
take a look at volume profile. Volume point of control coming in right here at the Bebop. Mm, 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 mm. Let's look at the previous day's volume point of control, if that could offer us any insight of where we could see a potential bounce of where market makers would likely jump in in the new week, protecting their positions that they have put in place on Friday. That's how I like to use the volume profile to interpret yeah, price action. So right here, high volume node. We went below that and we see that inefficiency within the volume profile. So we have a high volume area up here until really 4593. And that's where we hoarded for the Asia session. And then at 2 a.m. we started to break through this inefficient area with very low volume right here from this move. Now we're starting to retrace a little deeper into the next high volume area node. So starting from yeah, where we might even get the first bounce, higher volume than during this inefficiency. Might make more sense if we take a look at it on the one hour time frame. Mm -hmm. I'm considering. We found a low, lower high, lower low, higher high, higher low. Mm -hmm. Now it's not really a breaker block, otherwise I would have been looking for support here. No, no, no. One minute time frame, still no fair value gap. Not don't want to engage on one minute now. Are there any questions for this morning or any trades that you have already taken? Something you're looking at? Maybe also on NQ. Keep an eye on both. Mm -mm -mm. Bitcoin above 40k. Let's go. I've seen a few people on uh, crypto Twitter saying that now from ICT Twitter that Bitcoin doesn't care about fair value gaps and any PD raise. Well, I could have told them that before because of last bull run. And I thought it's funny because all these ICT concept traders, they try to apply daily and monthly ICT analysis. But it didn't work out. Let's see if there's anything new in the prop space for futures. Well, there's not much going on here for ES. Doesn't really spark my interest right now. We'll keep an eye on it. But it's more important to know when we shouldn't be trading than knowing when to trade. I know when I want to trade. Once I see confirmation for a potential market structure shift. Basically, I'm looking for change right now. Because change often presents that opportunity that I'm looking for. Turn off my phone notifications. Of course, we could have also be looking at the change on one minute. But we tend to get fooled more often if we always look for change on one minute. 
ideally we would like to combine combine the change on a one minute with a good higher time frame reason why we why it would make sense that we see a change in a state of delivery a bullish market structure shift right here and right here i i simply don't see it like why would we bounce from this area didn't hit the 50 percent of yesterday's range yet yes we are at the low of the day at this point in time but it can change real quick so i prefer sticking to a higher time frame we have no inefficiencies on the 15 minute time frame except for this one right here at midnight one hour still inside this one hour bullish Ooh, sorry guys but let's go to discord and see if we have any news promotion updates so apex is back at it again for a 71 percent uh, discount and you have discord works on our evaluation accounts and half price reset so if your apex account isn't going that well resets are only 50 uh, are 50 percent off now mm, any other announcements mm, nope top step Not really a fan of top step anyway. Trade day. So with trade day, I hope you guys all saw the announcement that I made. They now also have a activation fee right here before December 1st. So now you would also have to pay a $130 activation fee. One now $149 once you pass the account. I already updated the future funding firm video because now trade day really isn't the cheapest and because you know also have to yeah pay the activation fee i've already updated that and shared it inside the announcements channel right here mm -mm -mm. let's see any other future firms apex nope trade day take profit trader unfortunately doesn't have a discord yet but I think they're also going to jump onto the train very soon. Jump back to trading view. We're getting some momentum. Five minute time frame. Let's see if there's anything on the one. Market structure shift right here. So the indicator would have indicated a one minute change in the state of delivery. We look at the highest up closing candle right here is our breaker block, which has been nicely respected. But without the fair value gap. That doesn't have to be a fair value gap every time. It's just a nice added confluence, really. Market structure shift entry confirmed right here. Entry would have happened right there. So it would be the one minute market structure shift entry, but I happily sit out on that.
here, look at this. We took buy side with this move to the upside or these lower highs. We get a new market structure shift, leaving behind a bearish share value gap with midnight. We retest it and then we continue lower. And price even moved too quick for yeah, the indicator here to yeah, actually form a lower low and a lower high right here because they happened right next to each other. Needs three candles to identify that. So for me, really, the market structure shift would come in once we close above this high. I guess market structure shift bullish. Let's take a look at NQ. NQ is also pushing, looking stronger than ES right now. So we keep that in mind. DXY is pulling back further. Mm -mm -mm. Bearish share value gap. The next bearish share value gap would be coming in. In here. And then up here we have a unfilled bearish value gap. Paired with a volume imbalance. And there we go. Yeah, we're getting some good bullish momentum. Three points already. One and a half minutes to go. Buy side above each and every lower high. We already mapped out the fair value gaps. Five thirty five. Of the Asia session buy side, we have a unfilled volume imbalance here on the five minute time frame. Right here, we didn't see that retracement. We haven't filled that area yet. And another bearish share value gap. to the top take a look at NQ NQ is about to shift structure on the 15 we can see that ES is lagging behind here nice pin bar here on the DXY wick to the upside no wick to the downside above the Asia session high We didn't close above the five minute market structure shift level yet, but we closed above this bearish fair value gap, so we can already turn it into a inversion fair value gap. Let's check out the one minute. Yep, the one minute setup would have worked, but I still don't feel any kind of FOMO because like I said, middle of nowhere, I mean, if you've been trading ICT for some time on a one minute time frame, yes. But we could also get two or three one minute market structure shifts at the low of the day before the first one plays out. Sometimes it's that first one 
most of the time. It really isn't. Especially if we don't have a decent level paired with that. So in the case, we continue up higher. This would also turn into a inversion for value gap where we could look for potential support. Then we would be using this up closing candle as potential breaker block. You can see NQ is already up at the midnight level. There is no 15 minute inversion fair value gap that we could potentially be using. Also no 15 minute market structure shift level because all we've did yeah, since the midnight was this yeah, movement to the downside without really giving us proper market structure. And that would have been the five point target for ES, almost. There it goes, five points would have been hit off the one minute setup. Nice to see. Did anyone engage on that one minute setup? Good morning, Omar. Nice to see you back in here. Yeah, I think that's totally fair, not engaging on that setup. I mean, if we would have taken out the previous day slow, let's imagine right here we would have had any good area of interest, like the previous week, previous day slow, or maybe even just, I mean, I, I think I measured it correctly, but let's check again. From the low to the high, 4582. We almost, no, I think we, did we? Yeah, we bounced off the 50%, so this would have been the only confluence. Almost bounced off the 50%. And that almost is tricky. We had a one hour bullish share value gap here, but usually what I'd like to see is at least something on the 15. Well, we had something on the 15. All right, I give it that. But still. No reason for me to drop it down to a one minute. All right, DXY, NQ, NQ now already cleared Asia buy side. So beware of that. NQ swept the Asia high. Within the same amount of time that he has needed to yeah, shift structure here. On the five minute, let's go back to the 15 here to get a bigger, better overview. Okay, so the 15 minute time frame closed. We got our confirmed market structure shift. We have a bullish fair value gap right here. I'm not going to be drawing it in. We all see it. I don't know. Let's draw it in. We hit the Asia sell side liquidity, but didn't go above that. Bullish share value gap. We open up with a bearish volume imbalance. So let's see if we take an entry right here on that breaker block. A two and a half point stop might be too narrow. But three and a half points should really cover us. For five points, even before we hit the midnight level. Let's try that and buy one limit right here. We are on our funded account. We have our market structure shift. Could also be looking for an entry down lower to optimize the risk to reward ratio. But I prefer taking my entries at the high of the fair value gap. You can see that NQ is rejecting now after sweeping the Asia session high. So we could see the potential for SMT divergence. But for now, we have nice overlapping confluence. We have a inversion fair value gap up here. We have our breaker block right here. And we also have a bullish share value gap 
or lining up at this 4590 level. Target 5 points before we hit the midnight level. We could also be targeting a sharp buy side. We will see what kind of a yeah, setup we get. But this is enough change for me to take it on the 5 minute time frame this Monday. Mm -mm -mm. We have that volume imbalance at the low. We tap that. One minute time frame. Doesn't have to retrace here on the one minute. Opportunity is there though. All right. Um. That's really all we do, basically. We could leave the charts at this point in time. Our stop loss is set. Our entry is placed. And our take profit target, at least for now, is placed. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on it. But now would be the perfect time to ask questions. If you have any, of course. We marked out our chart. Now we could go back to work or something else. And just yeah, follow price action here. An entry above the breaker block. Not really interested in that because we have that midnight level sitting there. That would have to depend. Otherwise, I would just label it as missed because it only presented itself on a one minute time frame. So now it's time to journal. Um, there we go. No kill zone. Today is the 4th of December. No news. Um, pre London open. Taking some notes for that. Mm. Midnight open market structure shift. To sum it up in a few words, midnight open market structure shift. Five minute. Plus bearish value gap. Rejection followed by continuation lower below Asia south side. Beginning of London kill zone. Now let's just write 2 to 3 a.m. Continuation lower. Into 50%. Our previous day range. Mm. 
and then what happened at the London Open? Three twenty. Let's check out the fifteen minute time frame here. It's gonna close in three minutes. But like we said, there's no inefficiencies that we could be using on the fifteen other than this one right here. But for my liking, it's too far fetched. Um. at 3.30, 3.30am, bullish market structure shift, confirmed, on a five minute time frame, We notice the potential one minute setup. Market structure shift plus breaker. Let's go back to the one minute. Yeah, but no fair value gap entry, like we said. But without a fair value gap entry. Mm -mm -mm. And by the time of 3.40, a.m. Reach the Asia low again. And that was a from a low to a high. A seven point move. Limits are set. Watching, let's take a look at NQ and the DXY. The DXY is pushing back to the upside. And NQ yeah, keeps on grinding above the Asia session high. So let's actually watch this 15 minute candle close. If NQ manages to close above the midnight and the Asia session high, that would be a sign of strength. So 345. Fifteen minute candle. Cross above New York Midnight Open plus Asia buy side liquidity on NQ not yet on ES. All right. Enough journaling for now. We can see that we left behind a 15 or that we open with a 15 minute volume imbalance here from 3.15, 3.30 to 3.45. So let's take a look at that on the five minute time frame, right here on that Asia sell side liquidity that we've already cleared, just using it as a reference point. We closed above this bullish uh, bearish uh, value gap, turning it into a inversion fair value gap, leaving behind a new bullish one. So we could also move our entry a little bit up higher to that next bullish uh, value gap. And even enter on the inversion fair value gap, but not with me this morning. I'm gonna leave it at the breaker block. 
if we would take our entry from here, we would already have to get above the midnight level for five points. If we get in on the inversion, we would reach five points. If we continue higher above the Asia buy side, if we would do, if we would risk five points for five points, yeah, possible. For a one to one risk to reward and to Asia buy side. But I'm not up for that just yet. One minute time frame, consolidating, holding support on this highest one minute bullish. Also with a unfilled volume imbalance here. You can see that we are leaving behind perfect equal highs here. Yeah, I could see this simply continuing higher without giving us the breaker block entry, but I'd also be I wouldn't have a issue being left behind this morning. Like I said, if you like the setup and you think you're just going to follow what NQ has been doing, go back above the Asia session high. I outlined all the potential entry opportunities, inversion fair value gap, old resistance, turn into support, bullish fair value gap or breaker block. You can pick and choose whatever you like the most. short term buy set above all these highs right here and then the next level next area of resistance would be this bearish value gap right there the highest bearish value gap before we reach asia buy side liquidity if we reach asia buy side before giving the retracement and to the breaker block or a bullish value gap at least on a five minute time frame we're going to scratch the idea. And Q keeps on pushing. Same goes for yes. Did anyone enter already on the inversion fair value gap? Did anyone take that trade? Mm, doesn't look like it right now. Let's see what happens around the VWAP. We're back to our baseline. We took our first short term high. We took out the previous hour high right here. That's the previous hourly high. One hour bearish value. <laughs> That market structure shift here during Asia was actually pretty good. Like one hour bearish share value gap, five minute market structure shift, pair of a bearish share value gap for the continuation lower. Now the momentum seems to be pretty strong right now. Might just end up being left behind. But I'm. Right, so we closed above the VWAP. Mm -mm -mm. Volume imbalance remained open on the five minute time frame. We can't be acting surprised. I mean, we saw the bullish momentum, but we, or at least I prefer to not chase price if it's running away from me especially not this monday i mean we saw the reasoning here outlined the inversion fair value gap and that stuff but just not willing to risk it here yet equal highs we have rejected initially and started this entire move to the downside back inside of our Asia session range. Four, five, ninety entry is pending. Yeah, same for me. If we look at the expansion so far, it's coming in almost at the 50% retracement level.
and Q hitting a bearish one hour fair value gap. Hmm. Hmm. Fifteen minute bearish. And we're starting to reject. Let's watch it on a one minute time frame. Bearish volume and balance. back inside of our like yeah if we would have entered on this inversion fair value gap or if i would have entered on that my stop loss would already be sitting at break even because if i take the entry here i take it with the plan that momentum is so bullish we retest that area and we really have no reason to return into it again especially if we move away with bullish momentum from that. If we then leave behind a doji, we actually move, we close above the VWAP, hit a bearish inefficiency, left behind equal, buy, equal high buy side there. So in my mind, there's no real reason why we should return back into that inversion fair value gap. That's why I would move my stop loss to break even there. Ideally, you'd be using micros here you take some partials and move the rest of your position to break even. That's at least how I would play it. Black Friday sale is over, so I can delete this channel. Forty-one six hundred ninety doesn't stop, won't stop. This is one of my top picks for this bull run energy web right now sitting at two dollar and 76 cents in case anyone is into crypto and i advise you to do your own research just type it in watch a couple of youtube videos about it and check out their website, their partners, especially what they are doing and why there's a bullish case for it. I'm not going to say it here on stream. All right, so we close back below our volume imbalance, leaving behind a new bearish volume imbalance. That's interesting. Looking at NQ, also rejected from here, the DXY. Yeah. Interesting, at least. Like I said, we have our limit order pending. We didn't chase price. We're not worried that we got an entry up too high. We didn't jump in right here on the VWAP because we anticipated the momentum to continue. We have our entry set at the 50% retracement measured from the low to the high of our displacement, even above it, 4590 coming in right here if we retrace to that area we give it some room to breathe if we see it closing below the bullish value gap here so below 4588.25 
already considering to take an exit. Mm -mm -mm. Fifteen minute time frame is going to close in three minutes, leaving behind a potential fifteen minute bullish share value gap above this one right here. And look at this: our five minute entry fair value gap lines up perfectly with a fifteen minute fair value gap low, high. Doesn't have to mean, of course, that we're gonna bounce from here. We could also see a potential SMT divergence scenario where yes it's just too weak to take out the Asia buy side again compared to NQ and actually yeah reject continues lower breaking structure not respecting our breaker block so let's also keep that in mind a potential scenario that all this was was a retracement to trap traders long trying to buy the dip FOMOing into here we already looked at our fixed range volume profile we hit the volume point of control not really surprised we have a deficiency right here that's also lining up with our fair value gap and an efficiency right here also lining up with a fair value gap start loss is good but maybe to uh, be late on it by now euro hitting one hour bearish value gap and sell side in the middle could go anywhere i agree with that star atlas is that a crypto gaming token that's a good thing about energy web didn't do a 2x yet Um, by the way, did I miss something while being sick? At what point is the 2022 model challenge? Um, the 2022 model challenge I posted, I didn't really go anywhere with the fixed rule set. The main issue was that most of the time when we have seen the 2022 setup, we had a super huge stop loss. And during the most re recent market conditions, like for example right here where we went sideways right here on this one we didn't get filled and usually our stop loss with the displacement tended to be too huge or too large to reach a fixed two to one risk reward and my m main issue with it was that we got the initial move right let's say we moved away from the low of the day we have a huge stop loss and we have our previous day's high buy side liquidity right here Yet we're waiting for it to reach that take profit target in the middle of nowhere. And that yeah, just didn't really work with the most recent market conditions. I didn't end up paying for the second month of the trade day challenge. So I terminated that account. And for the past two weeks, I think where you have been sick, um, we only traded my Apex um trader funded account that account ending with uh four basically and we started at 50k now we're sitting at 52k 600 dollars away or 570 dollars away from reaching the payout threshold and once we reach that we can request the payout so yeah that's the only change i'm listening to the feedback of the community and the viewers watching and um, the live streams I really started to notice that yeah they are more interested in me tape reading learning that following order flow that's what we have been doing with yeah this trade away or apex 50k account everyone kind of gets the deal of 
waiting for a market structure shift, placing your stop loss here and there. But yeah, I just didn't like the very static approach where I wasn't able to have any thing to say. And that's the thing with every model or every 100% rule based system. You're taking yourself out of the equation. And that's sometimes during poor market conditions, yeah, it's more of a harm than a benefit. But that depends what you compare it to. If you, during poor market conditions, um, more harm to yourself without having a 100% fixed rule based system, then yeah, you might be better off using a 100% fixed rule based system during those poor conditions because then you end up losing less or ending up at break even. But I think I made it clear that within one and a half weeks, I think we've been doing it. I'm not really sure. After day 12, maybe we made a $2,000 profit on a funded account. Let me actually bring that up. So we tapped the five minute bullish value gap. And keep in mind, it's also a 15 minute bullish. We've spoke about that potential for a 15 minute bullish share value gap. I'm still waiting for my fill at 4590. Missed it by two ticks. Bento book. So in some sort of way, I failed the 66 day challenge, but yeah, looking at it from a different perspective, I also didn't. When did we start? I think right here on Monday, the 20th of November. Live trading this account after this red week. Let's take a look at NQ and the DXY. Low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. Potential is still there for the DXY to form a higher low. Let's see, tap us in, tap us in. Or the, I'm not sure how many of you guys are like really into crypto. Okay, Omar. So at least we have one. So in the meantime, there is a, okay, we're filled. Unfilled bearish volume imbalance. Let's see. We hit the breaker block. Mm, five minute bullish value gap. Ideally, I would like this first five minute bullish share value gap to hold and also the 15 minute otherwise we likely see that snt divergence scenario playing out how much room are, am i giving it to breathe two and a half points three and a half points for a potential five point or seven point target above the asia buy side for a two to one Keep in mind, this is also a 15 minute bullish, lowest 15 minute bullish. The 15 minute time frame is closing in eight minutes. Unfilled volume imbalance. NQ back at the midnight level, the DXY also continuing lower.
one minute time frame yeah likely a trap by the looks of it now we filled that lowest five minute bullish right here with this volume imbalance this orange shaded area i'm quick to close the trade if i get the opportunity to we still have three minutes on the clock so as long as we hold this 5 and 15 minute bullish share value gap i'm going to remain in this trade My stop loss is going to be right here at the slow at 4586.5. A safety stop loss, that's how we've been handling it. If I still close below, I'm out. Otherwise, I'm going to get stopped out if I lost right here. And then, yeah, the one minute setup played out. We had our baseline, we have the SMT divergence with NQ, and it's just not happening, at least on the S. already seen a pretty steep retracement 0 0.5 let's take a look at the volume profile here from the low to the high trap volume at Asia sell side at the old Asia session low, one and a half minutes to go. <laughs> Even pushing below that lowest bullish share value gap. Getting ready to manually exit the trade if, I, if we see that otherwise i'm gonna take the 150 dollar loss i think that's what it's ending up at or maybe not 200 yeah now 175 there's no point in believing that we're gonna bounce from anywhere down here we've been trapped we've tried to go long during bearish order flow we understand that it had the potential of course it's a 2022 setup but also, yeah, like we said earlier, in the middle of nowhere. Five minute time frame on those two. Let's wait for this five minute candle to close. And also look at the time, 4 a.m., new hourly candle, momentum to the downside. One hour time frame. sort of 3 a.m. retracement trapping longs okay so we close below all of this negating all of this if you're still in a trade with your stop loss below here there's a slight chance that it might still play out it's too small of a probability for me to keep holding on to that trade now we have multiple inversion fair value gaps to the upside we didn't respect any of the structure we have put in place. Break a block, done. Didn't respect the old bearish Chevelli gap that has been used as resistance. Deleting that. Didn't respect this one either. Volume balance, we just cut through that. Let the bearish Chevelli gap left behind the equal highs. Had a good chance of holding here. Mm -mm -mm, the DXY might be bouncing. NQ is also, also showing that weakness. So I would be more interested now in a potential short going with the flow. Understanding who has been trapped. Let's actually make this in a different color. Inversion fair value gap, 15 minute. Yeah. No point in holding on to this. This is the initial 15 minute bullish fair value gap where we bounced off. Might even close below that in the next three minute. 
three minutes. Add for five AM trigger limit order. Hit three and a half point stop. On the same candle, five minute close below breaker, close lowest bullish value gap. Yeah, that's fair enough. Also hit my stop loss, <clears throat> my safety stop, three and a half points. Not my life savings. Yeah, of course. Risk management is essential, even if you manage crypto markets. Mm. Following order flow, I'm tempted to see if we can get some sort of a retracement i don't like this unfilled volume imbalance in here we always return to them i'm a huge fan of that let's wait for the 15 minute candle to close Twenty seconds to go. Mm, yeah. Not sure. Maybe I'm also going to leave it at that and call it a morning session. So the fifteen minute time frame close below this lowest bullish value gap where we initially saw that bullish bounce from. Mm -mm -mm. SMT divergence at the high. The potential is here to go short, but the stop loss stop loss would have been uh, would be rather big. Could also see a W formation here. I don't know. Not sure. I We tried our best. We saw the setup, five minute market structure shift. I think potential definitely has been there. And what really defines you as a trader is how you yeah, manage taking a loss. Mm. So that's minus one hundred and seventy five dollars. Minus one seventy five dollars. Bearish share value gap with a inversion fair value gap.
XY continuing lower. EU holding support on that 15 minute bullish. Uh, back at the midnight level. I'm not too confident in the short. Hesitating a little bit right now. Like always, there's two scenarios. Scenario one, where we form a double bottom here on ES and still continue higher. Without respecting any of the PD arrays, that's when I don't like to participate or engage again. Can still could see and Q just retracing here. And yeah, we just see a deeper retracement on ES because ES failed to take out that high and pumped less or moved less. We have this unfilled volume imbalance in here that I don't like. So taking an entry on that first inversion fair value gap offers the potential of yeah, us having to hold through a potential retracement. Well, NQ could simply bounce from here. This would be if we go to the 15 minute, basically be the breaker block, this up closing candle. For the continuation higher. So be our market structure shift level on the DXY. Check out the one minute time frame. Too many inefficiencies here. We have a unfilled volume imbalance right here. Bearish share value gap, another unfilled volume imbalance. So if anything, I would try an entry right here at 4588.5. Fifteen minute time frame closing in ten minutes. Did we hit the inversion? Nope, we did not yet. <laughs> I don't like the DXY's reaction right now to continue to go short on ES. I think I might just leave it there. Um, there's no channel is more successful on Fibonacci, energy, right? Well, it depends on how many trades you plan to take during the London session, because sometimes it's not the first market structure shift. Sometimes it is, like today, for example. Sometimes it isn't. And the one minute time frame, you would just have to, if the first one fails, it can happen very 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 easily on the one minute time frame to shift structure didn't see the fair value gap for our structure shift either down here where, where where did it happen we kept respecting the breaker block yes but without the fair value gap and then we just ended up running the first fair value gap that we would have filled would have happened up here above the five minute market structure shift so i'm not saying it's not 100% less successful than the five minute time frame. I'm saying it 
you end up taking less trades, which I'm always a fan of. It's easier to manage on the five minute. And oftentimes during London, not oftentimes, but more times than not, yeah, that's basically oftentimes, you see that market circle shift that fails. And then it shifts again, and then maybe that second one will hold. You, you would just have to, I guess, risk less for a better risk reward because you tend to get better entries with the one minute time frame or yeah i'd say if you only try one trade per session the one minute time frame would give you sometimes too many opportunities and then that's it's the third one that plays out and you get annoyed because you didn't get in on the third one you got in on trade number one and trade number two both structure shifts fail that can happen for London, I simply prefer to yeah follow the five minute, but that's just me. In the end of the day, it comes to you like if you, it's your decision if you want to trade one minute. We watched on the one minute, we mapped out the breaker block. If a value gap happened right here. But we never retrace back into that. Not often, actually. Like I said, I'm not expecting a 100% win rate either. I'm happy with 50%. That's all we need. And 50% means we're going to lose half of the trades that we're taking. The most common mistake most traders do then is starting to, like, I don't know, after a couple of losing trades or the account not going anywhere to switch. Switch strategies, look for reasons why a strategy that you currently do because you have a couple of losing trades in a row why it doesn't make sense why a other approach or a different methodology a lower time frame would end up better but then the same thing happens when you trade a different strategy on a lower time frame or a completely different methodology you end up at the same issue you don't win 100 percent of your trades and then if you're in a losing streak you consider mm, there might be a better option or a better solution for this entire thing and look for other options and then you switch again and you end up at that same issue Theoretically, following what we've done with the trade day account, we would still be in trade. We got our entry right here. Our stop loss would have been down here. For me, there's just no reasoning why I would stay in this trade using my um, Apex account. My goal with the flow account. I mean, if I look at my bento book, where is it? 46% win rate. Drawdown, didn't change anything, keeps going out. But like always, most important thing is that the system uh, suits your, I would love 50%.
Good morning, Volker. Nice to have you back here. Yeah, but I think I'm going to call it a London session. If anything, I would be looking for a continuation short. But yeah, keep in mind, could be the possibility that we just got a very deep retracement without respecting any of the inefficiencies. And we could form some sort of a double bottom here. NQ holding the breaker block. The DXY shifting structure here. EU going higher. So I think for me personally, I'm just going to accept the losing trade and call it a session. Potential rust there. We saw the structure shift happening right here on the five. Lower low, lower high, lower low. We hit our lowest bullish share value gap that has been flipped into the inversion and we saw some resistance from that level immediately. But I think I'm better off if I leave it at uh, 445, 175. Is that correct? 178, yeah, with commission. Well, low 50% then. I don't know. I 2022 model for London, it definitely works, but question is, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that or how to give you better advice. I'm trying to think about that. I think for today, there's just nothing we could have done. I mean, our entry wasn't too far away in terms of like time from our market structure shift to our entry, 40 minutes. We didn't hit our Asia buy side liquidity first. So I think it was totally valid to try to get in with a potential change. So far, it wouldn't have hit our stop loss following the rules placing our stop loss at the swing low which in this case should be a protected low i just close because i don't see that playing out or i don't anticipate that playing out i like to keep my losing trades smaller than my winning trades and i do that by cutting risk once i see invalidation of fair value gaps especially my entry fair value gap and the entry breaker block like I said, there's always the odd chance that we're going to hold here. But for me, that probability is too small. That's why I don't keep on holding onto a potential losing trade and I just accept the loss.
that's the only thing that I'm sometimes would say that's the let's say if we get our market structure shift and we get our entry one or two hours later I think that would lower the prob the win rate or the probability of a specific setup to play out because then we are already entered that bearish order flow we didn't respect the um, we didn't take out Asia by side and Q did and Q reacted off a one hour and 15 minute bearish share value gap with our baseline and we reject so now all of a sudden we leave behind first signs of bearish order flow, bearish volume imbalance, bearish pin bar candle, unfilled volume imbalance, and we're just gonna continue lower. So, yeah, that reach, yeah, I don't know what to say, to be really honest. I would say, don't let your head down. Until later, Ryan. Mm -mm -mm. In Q respecting the breaker block right here, this 15 minute up closing candle after sweeping the Asia low. Five minute time frame. So now we hit our one minute unfilled volume imbalance but we have another one above mm -mm -mm. equal lows below bullish value gap we're starting to respect that well i'm on the fence if i want to try the short here what's the time it's 4 30. What's the 15 minute time frame looking like? Okay, now we also have a 15 minute bearish. Yeah, I might have hesitated for too long here. Could have placed a limit order right here on that volume imbalance. Now we're seeing the perfect reaction of this level. That's sometimes what happens if you have a losing trade and you contemplate too much, blah, blah, blah. Instead of just yeah, sticking to what you do, trusting in yourself. Mm. But I think I'm going to yeah, end it for the London session. I'm going to keep an eye on this. But yeah, we already hit the entry I was eyeing. This vol unfilled volume imbalance inside. The five minute bearish share value gap overlapping with the inversion fair value gap where we got our initial entry long from volume imbalance still being respected and yeah a potential 15 minute bearish share value gap engineered sell side liquidity taking a look at nq dxy uh, dxy doesn't really work in our favor at least right now unless we also just saw a steep retracement and bounce off here with our shifting structure no i'm thinking too much i'm gonna call it a session guys i'm gonna end the recording here unless we have any more questions